in this lesson guys we're going to be looking at trig identities which is part of the pure AS year one content we're only going to be looking at two identities which is where sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one and tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta just a quick overview of what we will actually be looking in today's lesson is how to manipulate the identity and then we will actually look at questions where they ask you to prove and show where the left hand side is equal to the right hand side so stay tuned <laughs> We're going to be focusing on two trigonometric identities, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals to one, and tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Now, just want to emphasize something. Both of these are referred to identities because theta holds for all values. What are you going to be actually required to do? So there's two things, guys, you're going to be asked to do. One is you'll be asked to manipulate them, which we'll be covering slightly later, but for now we're just going to be looking at the identities themselves. So let's start with a very straightforward example. Our question is, given that x is an acute angle, find the exact value of tan x if sine squared x equals to 3 quarters. So obviously the first place to start here is we need to look at our end goal. So our end goal is to find what tan x is. And the only way we can find tan x in this case is going to be using the identity that we had before, which is sine x over cos x. Um, in this context, we are using x to refer to the angle rather than theta because it is in the context of the question. So we need to find sine x and cos x. So the most sensible place to go, se uh, step to do next will be sine squared x equals to three quarters. Do the inverse, so sine x is equal to the square root of three quarters and we're only looking at the positive root why because here it says an acute angle so if it's an acute angle we're only looking at the positive root so we're going to say sine x is equal to root three over two after that we've got our sine x value which is great but we need to find our cos x value and the only way we're going to be able to do that is we using our other identity which was cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. So let's just rearrange it because we want to find what cos squared x is. Minus 1 minus sine squared x. So let's substitute sine squared x because we have that identified earlier, which is here. And we can plug it in to the formula. So 1 minus 3 quarters. So cos squared x is equal to a quarter. Cos x equals to the root positive square root again because it's the acute angle. So cos x is equal to root 1 over 2. So where do we go from here? Well, what we got to do is we're going to substitute our two values because we have tan x is equal to sine x over cos x we have now found our sine x and we have now found our cos found our cos x so we're going to plug them back in so we can say tan x equals to root 3 over 2 divided by root 1 over 2 which gives us tan x is equal to root 3 and that is our final answer. So from here, we're going to look at a few examples where we look at manipulating using the trig identities that we had looked at earlier. So with this one over here, we have the question, write a half bracket sine x cos x over one minus sine squared x plus one minus cos squared x over sine x cos x as a single trig ratio. So our first step here, would be to look at the fractions itself. So we have a half and what we're going to look at here is we can see that our denominators, we can change this using our trigger ratio from earlier. Let's just make note of it here. Cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to one. We can rearrange this to say cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So we can replace that. So let's do sine x cos x 
over cos squared x plus sine squared x. And why have I changed it to sine x? Similarly, so we've rearranged this to make uh, sine x the subject of the formula. So what we will do, 1 minus cos squared is equal to sine squared. And over sine x cos x. Now, where do we go from here? Well, we can see this will cancel out. So we're left with a half brackets sine x over cos x plus, let's cancel these two out. So we're left with sine x over cos x. Now, once they cancel out, we can actually further simplify. Let me just make a note of it here. Tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. So we can substitute this into here. So now it becomes a half tan x plus tan x, which actually is a half times 2 tan x and a half times 2, which becomes tan x. So what we've got here is our answer as a single ratio. Right guys, so let's move on to our next question. Another common type of question that you might get, they've given you something on the left hand side and you need to prove that it equals what is on the right hand side. In this case, we've got prove tan squared x plus one over tan squared x is equal to one over sine squared x. Now, just wanna uh, reiterate something. It doesn't matter which side you start with, but generally what would be a better place to start with is what makes it easier for you, where you can see an easy trig identity manipulation that will help you get to the final answer. I'm actually going to focus on the left hand side because I can see that tan squared, I can manipulate that to try and get it in terms of sine. How can I do that? Well, we go back to our trick identity that we had earlier. Tan x equals to sine x over cos x. So let's use that and see if we can prove the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is tan squared x Let's write that down here. So we're going to do sine squared x over cos squared x plus 1 all over. So this is my numerator. All I've done is change this to this. Okay. Um, and similarly, the denominator tan squared x, I'm going to write it as sine squared x over cos squared x. Right? Now, I can't divide yet because my numerator, which is all of this, so what I'm gonna do is my next step would be from here is sine squared x over cos squared x. We don't do anything with that. But this would now be cos squared x over cos squared x to get our common denominator. Let's just put it in brackets so we know all of that is our numerator. And our denominator, well, we're not going to do anything with that just yet. Cos squared x. Now, from here, we can now see that we can actually add these two because we have now have a common denominator of cos squared x. So let's do sine squared x. Let's just write it out before I actually complete that step. Plus cos squared x over cos squared x. And this is still my numerator. Let me just put it in brackets so we don't get confused. All over sine squared x over cos squared x, right? Now, what we should be able to notice is this is what we had earlier, where sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to one. Using that in the context of our question, we're gonna say our numerator now just becomes one over cos squared x. This is still our numerator and over sine squared x cos squared x. Okay, so let's actually work this out. So one over cos squared x divided by sine squared x over cos squared x. So keep the first fraction, change the sign when we're dividing fractions and flip the second fraction. So it's cos squared x over sine squared x and 
voila, they actually cancel out. And what you're left with is one over sine squared x. Now, if you recall, and possibly not after that much working, but our initial question had asked us is our final goal was to get to prove that the left hand side, which is tan squared x plus one over tan squared x is equal to one over sine squared x. And what we've actually managed to achieve is just that. So what you can write, therefore, the RHS is equal to the LHS. And basically, it's just a short acronym to say the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. Right, so from here, let's do a final example. Um, and believe it or not, guys, it might seem slightly daunting at first, but the more you practice with substituting and um, beg your pardon manipulating different trig identities it does become easier we've got a similar one to the previous example where we say prove sine to the power of 4x minus cos to the power of 4x all over sine squared x minus cos squared x is equal to 1. so again in this side there's not really much of an option we have to prove start by proving the left hand side so the first thing that i would do is try and make it familiar to me so to the power of four can seem a bit daunting so i would do sine squared x minus cos squared x and believe me it does come with practice the more which goes from pretty much everything in life um the more you practice the better you get at it so and then you've got sine squared x uh, minus cos squared x so we're not going to do anything with the denominator just yet Let's just focus on our numerator. Now, at this st stage, it might not be that obvious, but what this actually is, is a difference of two squares, okay? So what you've got is sine squared x minus cos squared x. How we can write it is this. We've got our difference of two squares, um, and we're not gonna, again, do anything just yet with our denominator but at this stage what you actually notice is going to be much shorter than we initially thought because if you notice we have a denominator and a numerator that actually cancels out so what you're actually left with is just sine squared x cos squared x and from previously using our identity we know that sine squared x plus cos squared x is actually just equal to one so therefore the left hand side is equal to the RHS, which is the right hand side. And I just want to again keep reiterating the reason why we have these three is to denote it is an identity that means it holds for all values of theta and obviously in this case x, which is the angle. I'm going to explain how the numerator became a difference of two squares because it's not easily identifiable how it went from this stage to this stage. So let's just make a note of this over here. So what we can say, just to sh prove to you, so you've got sine squared x plus cos squared x and one bracket and you've got sine squared x minus cos squared x in the other bracket. So let's multiply them so you get sine to the power of 4x minus sine squared x cos squared x plus cos squared x sine squared x um, minus cos 4x now what you actually notice from here is these two cancel out and you're left with sine 4x minus cos 4x which actually was what we initially started off with here Right, that's it for today's lesson guys thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the next one